This video features an audio reading of a passage from the Pulpit Commentary on the Bible regarding Jesus Christ and the Passover. This particular homily is on the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verse 12, and the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare, that thou mayest eat the Passover? Verses 13 through 15 continue thus, And he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. Commentary on verse 12. The Passover was by far the most important of the Jewish feasts. The disciples of our Lord were sure that he who ever fulfilled the righteousness of the law would not fail to observe it. Their reminder of what they supposed he had forgotten, but which really was the subject of far profounder thought with him than they could fathom, immediately led them to the remarkable incidents which are here recorded, the strange provision of the feast by a secret disciple, and the spiritual institution which Christ founded on the ancient rite. There were truths set forth by the Mosaic festival, of which the Jews were never to lose sight, and which are full of significance to us. A few of these we will recall. 1. The Passover required a spotless victim. In this, as in many other Jewish ordinances, the spiritual was represented by the visible. The victim might be chosen from the goats or from the sheep. Kids were offered as late as Josiah's reign in Second Chronicles, although in our Lord's time only lambs were sacrificed. This was of less consequence than the rule that the victim chosen should be without blemish, not deformed, sickly, or injured. Doubtless, this taught the worshippers to offer their best, and do so cheerfully, with humble acknowledgment of the divine right. The Jews learnt the lesson. Their religion cost them something, and they nobly responded to its claims, as we see when the tabernacle was erected and when the temple was built. Christians, in their gifts and in services, too often act as the Israelites would have done had they chosen their blemished and sickly lambs for sacrifice. Besides, this provision was significant of the sacred purpose to which the victim was devoted, and symbolical of the moral integrity of the person it represented. The male of the first year, in the fullness of its life, stood for the firstborn sons of Israel who were spared while it died. Nor does this exhaust the meaning. The spotless lamb points to him, of whom John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, to him who offered up himself, to him of whom we read, Ye are not redeemed with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 2. The Passover required personal participation. It might have seemed to human wisdom hardly reasonable that deliverance from a pestilence 
should be the result of sprinkling the blood of a slaughtered lamb on the two side posts and lintel of the door but he would have suffered the penalty of his rashness who had run the risk of his incredulity every saved household had its own lamb and every saved one in that household was compelled to remain for his safety in the blood-sprinkled house this arrangement on the basis of family relationship was not made so much for convenience as it was to sanction and sanctify home life and to teach all who were united by earthly love to find their center in the paschal lamb the israelites were not saved because they were descended from abraham but because of the blood sprinkled in faith and obedience three the passover was to be accompanied by penitence and sincerity the use of unleavened bread was ordained leaven the presence of which was strictly forbidden was a symbol of moral corruption which the people were to put away from their hearts christ jesus warned his disciples against the leaven of the pharisees which is hypocrisy saint paul in first corinthians referring to evil in the church said christ our passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth more than anything else our lord rebuked insincerity as the king of truth he still says he that is of the truth heareth my voice bitter herbs were also to be eaten at the passover not because they would give flavor to sweeter food nor as a mere accompaniment to it but as an essential part of the feast the bitter bondage of egypt was thereby represented which was overpowered by the sweetness of the lamb it may symbolize the bitter sorrow with which we should mourn our guilt for the passover was a source of peace and a pledge of progress the israelites in egypt knew that judgment was falling around them and in that ominous dreadful night the peace of each one was proportioned to his trust in the appointed means of deliverance those who partook of the feast were prepared for the march through the red sea and the wilderness until canaan was reached and won thank you for watching please like and share this video hit the subscribe button and notification bell and feel free to ask me any question in the comment section below due to the sacred nature of these videos i would prefer to keep them ad free please help me to do that by clicking the patreon link in the description box below and make a donation to this channel or buy me a coffee with the Kofi tip jar link paypal is accepted every dollar counts thank you for your support